Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the South Carolina Farm Bureau. Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by Time Warner Cable. And welcome back to this week at the State House as the Senate and the House continue to meet. The session is moving along into its final weeks. The Senate has continued to uh, debate bills. The House is debating bills. The DOA bill is not made it between the two houses. The Senate is not taking up the charter school bill. The Senate is now moving toward uh, the governor, lieutenant governor issue on the floor. A lot of things happening here, but there are a lot of things happening in South Carolina. One of them continues to be the hot controversy on the Savannah River. Is it good for the environment? Is it good for South Carolina? Is it good for the people? Has one agency stepped over another agency? Is South Carolina money being encumbered on the Savannah River without a vote of a majority of South Carolinians? All kind of issues dealing with that river that we're going to deal with today. But before we do, let me, of course, thank the South Carolina Educational Television, South Carolina Press Association, uh, the South Carolina Cable Association, and Time Warner Cable for making this broadcast possible. And I always know, for instance, over in 518 of the lot building, uh, they can have an opportunity to get an in-depth look at some of the issues. You know, Representative Stavernakis has told me, he said, this show... It's better than homework, he said, because all you have to do is sit and watch and you get some instant answers. And he and Representative Thompson over the years, along with Representative Parker, have been uh, really good, um, loyal fans of this program. I have with us today an interesting group. And uh, one of the things we do now is we bring both House members and senators together to discuss these issues. And I'll start over here and I'll just send a Clementa Pinckney. He's from Jasper. He's interested in the Jasper Port right there on the Savannah River in your district's right there. Absolutely. Senator Larry Grooms, Berkeley, Bono. Um, I think you're now totally just, at, well, you're still in Charleston County too, I think, with your Senate district. A little bit of Mount Pleasant. He's chairman of the Senate Transportation Committee. He's also been involved in port issues, been very vocal uh, on the issue of the Savannah River. Right next to him, Longtime veteran from the House, Representative Jim Merrill. I think you've been a, uh, have seen this show before, but you have been most vocal on the House floor about the resolution to push through to try to straighten up the political controversies on the Savannah River. I have, and Senator, congratulations on your first show. Um, and you're right, the House does watch you avidly. In fact, uh, for a, a lighthearted <laughs> moment, if you don't mind, before we begin on the topics, in honor of your first show. Uh, Ray, could you hand me that bag real fast? We did in the house take up a collection and we know historical accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> we have gotten you a powdered wig and if you would wear that as you preside. Well, I'll have the, to. Um, <laughs> a future. I tell you, the house is always so generous. Yes, you know, exactly. <laughs> we'll put that back there for now. I don't want anything to distract from y'all's answers. <laughs> so I'll start out with you, <laughs> Senator Pink. <clears throat> The Jasper Port. Yes. Is it being built now or is it not being built? It's not being built now. And uh, this is a project that I and my predecessors have been working on for about the last 20 years. And since about 1997, uh, it's been uh, a big goal of mine from the House. And in coming into the Senate, uh, over the last 12 years, we've hopefully been making a little progress, but not a lot of, not as much as I think we should. 
Uh, we have moved from private developers wanting to invest a half a billion dollars, not asking for any state funds to open up a private terminal, to trying to get the state ports authority to look at it as an option, uh, and even trying to find a way to get both states to work together. Uh, I'm sure at some point we will, but we're still moving a little slow in the process. Well, let me ask you, Georgia wants to dredge out the river and go beyond Jasper all the way up to Savannah. Yes. So. It, does that indicate to me that they want to take the ships to Savannah and not to Jasper? Why not stop at Jasper? Why not, why not dredge the river right to there and stop? Well, that's a good question. And I first want to make clear that I'm not advocating for the Georgia Ports Authority. Oh, I know you're not. Because uh, I live in South Carolina. Uh, what I'd like to, you know, what Georgia has done is they've worked on a plan long before we have, unfortunately. I think former leadership at the Ports Authority was not as aggressive as their Ports Authority. So we're a couple of years behind. They're 10, 12 years into their process. I would love for Savannah or Georgia to stop their current progress and to focus on the Jasper Port site because it is eight miles from the sea buoy. It doesn't have the environmental impact and it's overall a better location, I believe. Uh, however, that's, <laughs> that's beyond, beyond me, but if there's a way to do it, that's fine. But I do think in the future, if both states work together through a process, we can have a joint pro we can have a joint project in Jasper. But if there was a way, I would love in an ideal world, it would be great if the Georgia Ports Authority could look at this site and build right now. Senator Grooms, he makes a solid case that why not just stop at Jasper? Environmental damage on the river. Can it be minimized if you just go to Jasper and build there and not go forward? What help the viewers understand what's about to occur on that river? Well, what's about to occur on the river, uh, the Corps of Engineers has issued a final um, environmental impact statement. They've issued the statement saying, go ahead, go ahead, Georgia Ports Authority, rake the river, rake the economy of South Carolina, make it such that you'll never be able to build a Jasper port, and we're supposed to applaud. We're not going to take this sitting down. Our economy is important. Our environment's important. We need to do what we can to look out for South Carolina's interest on the Savannah River. The folks in Georgia tend to forget. That's a shared resource. The river belongs to all the peoples of South Carolina and all the peoples of the state of Georgia. And the current SHEP project, SHEP stands for Savannah Harbor Deepening Project. The current SHEP project calls for dredging 32 miles of river from the open ocean all the way to the city of Savannah up into Garden City. And what they're proposing to do will harm our environment, will harm our economy, and it'll make the Jasper Port nothing more than a, than a dream. It's, it's up in smoke uh, when the current SHEP moves forward. The sensible thing to do that would, that would be a benefit to the people of both states would be to dredge the river to a depth that could support post Panamax ships, the largest ships that would travel the ocean. Dredge, dredge the river to a depth of around 50 feet, maybe even 52 feet. That can be done up until up to you reach the spot of where we're proposing to build a Jasper Ocean Terminal. Because most of the environmental damage from dredging the harbor, from dredging the river deeper than it is right now, occurs between the Jasper Ocean site and the Garden City Terminal. Well, isn't that where the, uh, they call it cadmium-laden sludge? Isn't that where the cadmium-laden sediment comes from, up above Jasper? Well, our friends on the other side of the river have been putting all kinds of things into the river over the years. And some cadmium lace sludge now has developed in certain parts of the river. And one of the plans that the Georgia Ports Authority has for South Carolina is to put their cadmium lace soil on our lands. Not only on our lands, but on the site where we plan to build a Jasper Ocean Terminal, making it nearly impossible to build the Jasper Ocean Terminal if their harbor deepening project goes through as they have proposed. All right. Um, and, and before I go to Representative Merrill, so the post Panamax ships, you could dredge up to Jasper and create that type of port, but they want to go beyond there, way up the river, and then dump their sludge on our land, on our side of the river, where the Jasper port's supposed to be built. Is that essentially, do I have it encapsulated in, in, in good summary? That's about what's going to occur there? That's what they're planning to do, and it gets even worse. There are several spoil sites where they're planning on putting spoil, 
but our folks that are working on something called the Joint Project Office, that's a group of um, uh, three members from South Carolina and three members from Georgia. Their task has been to develop a Jasper Ocean Terminal. Now the Joint Project Office is considering helping the helping the Savannah Harbor Deepening Project by spending taxpayer dollars, committing some of our money, some of the monies from South Carolina. They want to reach in and rob the people of South Carolina and help so, so that we can help them destroy our economy and our environment by raising the dikes even higher on the sites where we want to build a Jasper Ocean Terminal. They want us to support the Savannah Harbor Deepening Project. That's currently... You um, mean we pay to take their sludge? Pay to take their sludge. Now, fulfill, Governor, but I understand it'll go fulfill right. for the site. Now, Governor, I don't. I know we want to get to the esteemed gentleman from the House, uh, but I need to rebut a little bit about with my uh, what, what my colleague just said. Go right ahead. Uh, you know, first of all, for debate here. You know, <laughs> I, I want to you know first say there there seems to be some misinformation about what the Joint Project Office proposed in the uh, in its plan and also about the uh, dredge. Uh, the sites that we're talking about are currently or have been owned by the Georgia Department of Transportation for several, many years now. They've used that for dread, for dread spoil site. Uh, and both ports, both ports use a, several engineering firms. One of them is named Moffat and Nichols and Associates. They have determined that there is uh, several uh, types of uh, dread spores that can come out of the river. And the proposed plan says that moving forward, the opportunity plan, as, it called, as it's called, uses the studies from Moffat, Moffat and Nichols, which shows that there is, quote, good spoils that can be taken from the river. And if the SHEP plan is approved, then we would like to have the good spoils to be put on um, the site, the proposed site, so that it can build up the, the bluff. Basically what would happen is, if we move forward with the project, it would take about, we would need about $300 million in fuel soil to build the project up so that it would be above, about 19 feet above high tide. That's going to cost about $300 million or if the SHEP project moves forward, take the good spoils and place it on the project. This is not something that's been determined by the Georgia Points Authority. It's not something that's been determined by the Joint Project Office per se. It's been determined by an independent engineering firm, respected and acknowledged by both of our points authorities. And, and, and what I want to mention is, it's not about putting cadmium lace spoils on this particular site. The opportunity plan says if the SHEP project moves forward, then the good spoils material will be placed on this site. And the Joint Project Office is the only office, the only organization that's been working to move forward with the Georgia Port site. Excuse me, the Jasper, the Jasper Ocean Terminal site. And it's not about them taking sides with Jasper or, excuse me, with Georgia or South Carolina. It's figuring out how do we move the project forward with both states. Because the Corps of Engineers have said very clearly, we're not going to permit or accept a permit for this project. We're not going to remove the, um, excuse me, we, we're not going to remove the easements off this site unless there's a joint project between both states. Uh -huh. So the, the attacks on the joint project office and the idea to get away, with, to do away with it only removes any potential uh, future joint uh, project uh, on Jasper. You wish quickly respond because I want to go to Representative Merrill. And Mer Representative Merrill, if you want to respond to it, and I also would like you to address to the viewers, you began a resolution which has passed this General Assembly. The issues come up about the Savannah River Maritime Commission. Sure. Who has jurisdiction? Is the aquifer in danger of being punctured? What are some of the environmental risks? And then I hear this story about bubblers on the river that are going to blow life back into the river with diesel-powered engines. Can you please uh, jump into the debate yeah, and give us your view? I'd very much like to, and thank you. Uh, first of all, in, in regard to our interaction with, with Georgia, um, I think that one of the biggest problems we have is that there's a certain degree of us not controlling our own destiny right now. We entered into a, um, into a battle with Georgia, and that's what it is. It's a battle over who is going to control uh, the economics for the Southeast, who is going to improve their, their state's business climate, etc. And honestly, when we began, I feel like South Carolina wasn't prepared to enter into that battle. We got 
sold a bit of a bill of goods. And since that time, we've been trying to play catch up. Um, when it comes to the, to, the, um, to the land, the Jasper property, I don't think most people realize that Georgia owns that property or has been leasing it and, um, and uh, that they were putting spoils on there. Most people are outraged when they hear it. And I think that might be the right way to do things, to build it up so that we can use it, uh, Senator. But I think the thing is we need to have more control as South Carolinians over what goes onto that property. And right now I don't believe we really have that. Um, in terms of, of the uh, environmental impact, uh, yes, we had great concerns, great concerns. We established the Savannah River Maritime Commission. And the purpose of that was to work with Georgia, to work with the river, to protect the river. And instead, what has happened, and by DHEC's decision, they basically took an agency which was established by the General Assembly of South Carolina, signed by the governor, and, and they, they negated it. They, they kind of, um, they made it irrelevant. And that is what we had to go back to and, and correct. We needed to apparently... Well, how can a state agency, though, change a law that the General Assembly has passed? Well, Senator, they can't. I think we all know that. And that is the problem. Apparently, DHEC thought they could. Unfortunately, the governor, who I generally agree with, um, sided with the other side on this one. It was wrong. And um, I've encouraged the governor's office a number of times to just come out and say you were wrong. Let's be done with it. Let's all get behind our effort to improve South Carolina. Um, she's kind of dug in her heels a bit, so it appears that we, we are not going to go that direction. We're going to have to just kind of fight that one out. But we have empowered the Savannah River, Time, River Maritime Commission, and we want them to do their job. And unfortunately, this DHEC decision uh, usurped that. Well, how about the joint project? Can the joint project... I would ask the two of y'all, can the joint project, any of the three of you in fact, can they go in and handle matters dealing with, with, with sludge disposal and dredging on the river in light of the Savannah River Maritime legislation without getting the approval of the Maritime well, Commission? I, 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 it seems to me there's an issue being raised there. I, and, I, and I think that, you know, the, again, the, the, there may be some misunderstanding. The, the Joint Project Office had a, has a proposal and it was approved. It said if the SHEP project is approved and if it moves forward and if there are dredge spoils, if it says that if there are good dredge spoils, then let us place those dredge spoils on the current site that's being used by Georgia already for dredging. And instead of putting everything on that site, let us use the good spoils that come out of the river. The Joint Project Office did not approve any dredging. It did not approve or it does not endorse the SHEP plan. It says if then. It doesn't say we endorse. Right. It doesn't say we, we will do thus and such. It says if the project is approved, then give us the good spoils so that as the project moves forward, it doesn't have to spend $300 million building up the site. So my question would still be to all of you, if or whatever, can they do it without the Savannah River Maritime Commission? That's, the, I guess, one of the legal questions I'd like to ask. Uh, Senator, you, 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 Governor, I need, I need to jump in here. No, they, they, they cannot. They cannot. The, the action of the Joint Project Office, even the chairman of the State Ports Authority who sits on the Joint Project Office, questioned in an open meeting, do I even have, questioned the attorneys, do I even have the ability to vote on raising the dike so that we can receive the spoil, the dredge material from the river? He didn't think he had the um, legal authority to do so and asked the Joint Project Office, the members of it, enough time to research the answer. And then a member, one member from South Carolina said, I don't need any legal advice on this. I know the answer to that question and let's move ahead. And I call for the vote. And the three members from Georgia and one member from South Carolina said, yes, let's support this opportunity plan to raise the dikes a little bit higher to receive the spoil and waste material from the Savannah River on these sites, 14A and 14B. They did that in violation of South Carolina law. Two of our members abstained from doing that. And because of the illegal actions of the Joint Project Office, I introduced a resolution in the South Carolina Senate to correct this problem, to make sure that those who are representing South Carolina Carolina on the Joint Project Office at least have confirmation of advice and consent of the Senate so that we can understand whether they're looking out for our interest or the interest of someone else. And I want to make sure that the Joint Project Office is working to help South Carolina 
and not to help the state of Georgia further their plans for deepening the Savannah River at our expense, at our economic expense, at our environmental expense, and also want to make sure that we can build the Jasper Ocean Terminal at some point, because the SHEP project that's currently designed, it makes it impossible to build a Jasper Ocean Terminal, at least for the next 50 years. And because of the environmental damage that'll be done by the current SHEP project, I doubt, I doubt that we will ever get the environmental permits necessary to deepen the river to 50 feet and have dual lane traffic on that river so that we can have a prosperous and viable Jasper Ocean Terminal. The Georgia Ports Authority in court, in court filings, they will not even admit that the Jasper Ocean Terminal is a viable project. When asked directly, is the Jasper Ocean Terminal a viable project? They refuse to answer it, saying that this, this, this term viable is, is vague and, and un, unambiguous. We don't even know what viable means. If well, they don't know what viable means, I do. It means that they're dragging their feet and they have no intention of helping us build the Jasper Ocean Terminal. This whole thing's been a ruse to be able to get South Carolina's permission to dredge the Savannah River for their benefit and not ours. And I want to make sure that South Carolina's interests are heard with the Joint Project Office, and that's not occurring. We introduced a resolution, it passed unanimously, and now the resolution is stuck on the Senate calendar. It's not going anywhere because there's been an objection to the bill. Well, Mr. I'm going to come back to you. Sorry. I just want to get a perspective from the House. Yeah. You heard what Senator Grooms, tell me, where, where, what is the discussion in the House about this issue? I, I think that Senator Grooms, obviously we're very passionate about the issue, but I, I think he hit on the right thing. This. The general view, I believe, at this point, is that the Savannah, or excuse me, the Jasper port was being used as a mechanism for them to further the Savannah port, and that their intent to actually fulfill their obligations on that and to make a viable Jasper port was never really there. And I think with each movement that they have made, it's become more and more apparent that that is true. We want a Jasper port. South Carolina wants a Jasper port. Unfortunately, the mechanisms and the positions that we've been put into are not making that viable right now. We put ourselves in a bad spot, unfortunately. And the center is right. We missed the boat a while back when we had private businesses down there that were going to do it for us, but that time's long past. And Georgia outthought us on this a little bit at the time, or outmaneuvered us. I will say, though, I mean, it's very bothersome, uh, Senators, that when you look at what the Corps of Engineers has done, there is nobody who can look at the proposal that Georgia put forward for deepening the Savannah River and say that it makes more economic sense, more environmental sense than the Charleston port, for instance. They, I mean, whether it be the fact that it costs twice as much, that if they do get to the 47 feet, you still have to use one lane of tra traffic during certain, high, certain tides, that they've got to go all the way out to the ocean buoy, I mean, that they have to pump air as if you had an aquarium into the river so that you will not kill the wildlife, the fish that live there. I mean, it's insane. In the Army Corps of Engineers, I, I know you're not supposed to say this, this makes South Carolina a, a little nervous when we do this, some of our guys down the port, but I think the Corps is culpable in this. I do not think they have been responsible in any way, shape, or form. They are too complicit with Georgia, and no rational person would look at the facts right now and say, you know, that's a good plan. That's a good, we should go forward with that. That's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. Senator, you want to quickly respond because I want to get to the aquifer sure. and the environmental damage I, real quick. I do want to respond on a couple of points. One, uh, the Joint Project Office is not, quote, a pawn of Georgia. It is not being used by the Georgia Ports Authority to further the, the, the SHEP plan. In fact, every vote that has been taken with the JPO has been mindful that they are not taking sides with either expansion project. It's focused specifically on the Jasper Ocean Terminal project. Second. It doesn't matter what the what the uh, the joint project office decided to do in terms of the opportunity plan. Georgia already owns the plan and has the right to put the spoils wherever it wants. So what this did was the uh, what the opportunity plan did was to outline what would be the most important spoils to have placed on the site. I want to make sure that's clear. Second, the Joint Project Office is a combination of both states trying to move the project forward. The Corps of Engineers said there would be no way that they would issue a permit unless both states work together, and that was said over five years ago. Uh, I also want to mention that, unfortunately, 
South Carolina, the South Carolina Ports Authority, has shown over and over again no interest in the Jasper Ocean Terminal site until they feel that they're being impacted by what Georgia does. Again, I'm not an advocate for Georgia, yes. but moving through this process, I've seen it happen again. And we got, again. We got less than three minutes, and, and we're not going to have time. I want to get into y'all, so we'll have to have another show on the aquifer. I want to find out what happens if the aquifer gets punched, what happens, saltwater intrusion. Wetlands, I understand, are going to be destroyed. Want to know about that? I'd like to know about the dead river versus the bubblers, and is this good proven technology? So, but we have less than three minutes, so what I'm going to do, any of you give each of you an opportunity to state your best case forward. Uh, he just responded. I'll give you, Senator Grooms, an opportunity to respond to him, and then I want to go to the House and, and get their final comments also. Just want 15 seconds on one small yes, thing. Sir. I'll make it quick. The, the, the idea of viability of the Jasper site always comes up. When we were all trying to figure out what to do in Charleston, the state ports authority says Jasper is not a viable site, and that was based on the fact there was no permitting, there was no research done. The, the Georgia Ports Authority did the exact same thing in the exact same instance. And so that's where this whole question of viability comes up. They're both, both states are committed to work through the Joint Project Office to see this through. Just All wanted to mention Senator that. Grimes. The State Ports Authority says Jasper is a viable site. It's the Georgia Ports Authority that says it's not. And it does make sense to put some spoil in the um, Jasper Ocean Terminal site to build the site up. But the problem is, if we're taking the spoil from an area, the Savannah River, between Jasper and the, and the city of Savannah, then all we're doing is telling the Corps of Engineers, we really want the project. Go ahead and dump the spoil here. If, if your neighbor's digging a ditch between your properties and you don't want him to dig the ditch, but then you say, oh, go ahead, go ahead and, and dump all the dirt on my side, and by the way, let, 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 let me help you pay for it. That's saying that you support the digging of the ditch. And when our joint project office says, yeah, uh, we're going to help cost share the project. We're going to help uh, spend money to raise the dike so you could put even more spoil here. It, 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 it doesn't make sense from the South Carolina standpoint. Jasper, is, Jasper Ocean Terminal will not become a reality if the SHEP project, as currently designed, moves forward. Representative Merrill. Well, and Senator, just one thing. I, I don't think there has in any way, shape, or form been unanimity down there. At last vote, as I recall, there were two of South Carolina members voted against uh, the actions that were being taken, and one voted uh, with uh, Georgia, and that's that's how the last uh, decision was made. But the thing that is is, is bothersome, I don't know that, that folks understand the enormity of this. This will impact the future of South Carolina for years to come, where businesses locate, where um, uh, where industry comes to, wh whether people move to South Carolina, the money they put in it. This is not, I think the governor at one, at one point said this was bickering. Bickering minimizes this to a preposter preposterous level. This is impactful and it is, in my mind, the single most important issue that we can be dealing with today. Well, what happens to us, we get impacted by time. None of you needed this for thinking <laughs> and talking. So with that, we'll be back with further issues here at This Week at the State House. Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by Time Warner Cable.